Hello everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. Uh, we are streaming live. Uh, today I want to talk about something very important. Uh, this is all about your back or neck condition that you've been suffering with for, I don't know how long, but people suffer a whole lifetime. Uh, herniated discs, bulging discs, uh, disc degenerative changes, uh, pinched nerves. Uh, generally, when you go to the doctor, uh, they're going to recommend something for your pain. But what I want to show you, where all disc problems have a common denominator, because the biggest issue that I see in medicine, or actually in chiropractic, uh, or in the medical route, because I deal with orthopedics all the time, I deal with surgeons, neurologists, neurosurgeons, physiatrists, is that everyone is out to get objective tests primarily MRI scans. Uh, MRI scans primarily uh, deal with soft tissue. So in other words, the disc is composed of soft tissue. And if you look at this picture right here, uh, we're looking at the outside fibers of the disc called the annular fibrosis. The inside part of the disc is called the nucleus polyposis. I want to teach you some basic anatomy because I'm going to show you something that you're probably going to be relieved in just a few minutes. But if you notice, if you look at this disc here, as we get older or as we have trauma to a disc or as we uh, have poor diets or as we genetically uh, have weaknesses, the disc can actually become brittle on the outside. It can start to tear. They call that a herniated disc or different kinds of herniated discs. Now, on the inside of that nucleus is like a marshmallow. So as that marshmallow pushes outward against those annular fibers, uh, that is and can't possibly compress a nerve, which I'll show you in just a second. But just get this basis because what I'm trying to get to is that when doctors see MRI tests and it shows a bulging disc or herniated disc or ruptured disc, right away they want to do procedures. I'm telling you that most, most, just about mostly all of these procedures today are not necessary worldwide. The biggest reason why people get surgery is because they can't withstand the pain or they're scared because the doctor tells them that if you don't do it, X, Y, Z will happen. Well, I'll get to that in just a second. So here's a picture here of the annular fibrosis as well as nucleus. Then you can look to the right of it and see how it works in the spine. And I really want you to understand this because my point today is to get you to understand that there's one nerve in there that no doctor ever talks about that's causing your chronic pain causing your disc pain because that's why they're looking for herniations and bulging discs and sequesters and fragmented discs so they can give you something in writing to say, hey, listen, we need to do something. But that's not where most of your pain's coming from. Now, if I show you this just briefly, uh, just to let you know, uh, this is how this disc is sitting right now. Okay, you can see the disc here. You can see the yellow nerves coming out here, but there's a cross section to the left that you can see the annular fibrosis nucleus, how the inside gel is composed inside that, that, that annular fibers. Now this one will show you another view. This shows you the side view, kind of like what I'm showing you here. So the nerves come out between the vertebrae. Those nerves supply the different areas. The nerves in the neck go down the neck, shoulder, into the arm, into the hand, go to the chest, the mid-back. Nerves in the lower back affect the legs, the buttocks, as well as the lower back, sciatica. So just as long as you know your basic anatomy, well, you can look back at my other videos and we'll tell you more. But for the basis here, I want to focus in the disc. Very few people talk about this. I did my research and I've actually looked back here uh, through these other videos, and no one talks about this. And I thought it was quite exciting that I want to be uh, one where you can get to understand more about what's happening here. Uh, so now that you understand the annular, the annular fibers, which is the ring or the fibers around the inside of the gel, the gel can kind of be the cream of the donut. So when the donut dries out, um, because uh, bad nutrition, uh, poor physical habits, uh, overweight, uh, just things that can weaken those fibers. That, as we said, the inside gel can push against it, kind of like a marshmallow, bulging or herniated, herniating that disc, obviously affecting the nerve. So here, uh, um, I wanted to bring out, it shows you the disc in between two vertebrae, and it shows you 
that when you lean forward, what happens in the back, and when you lean back, what happens in the front. So you can see that when we lean forward, the discs start to wedge, okay? So let's look at the neck here. If you lean forward, the discs in the front start to wedge, compression in the front, pushing the gel backwards. That's on the left side. That's flexion bending forward. If we lean backwards, okay, this is the neck area. You can, you can do the same thing on your back. As you lean backwards, the pressure is on the back part. Okay, let's show you this way. The pressure is on the back part of the disc pushing the gel forward, okay? So that is obviously a way of traumatic, uh, having traumatic injury to a disc if you have a whiplash, boom, boom. Or if you lift something heavy, uh, you can hurt the disc. So if you look at the back of those vertebrae, they're called facet joints. And now those facet joints, they glide on each other. So when you bend, those bones are gliding. So you know what the facet joints are. The facet joints are the back part of the vertebrae just to show you here, these facet joints, when I lean back, this, these joints are sitting on bones back here, okay? That's why it's important to have a normal curve in your neck because the weight of the head being 12 pounds is coming down on the facet joints. If you have a straightening of the neck or the reversal of the neck, the weight of the head is going to compress on the discs. That's why you get degenerative discs. That's why you get herniated or damaged discs. So let's go to the next step. So now, this, the, here's the, the, the disc, looking down at it, the inside gel, you can see the, the angular, the, the nucleus pulposus, you can see the fibers around the gel on the inside, you can see the nerves come out at that disc level. So if that inside nucleus pushes back or to the side and it affects those nerves, you can have irritation on the nerve. This picture here, shows us a side view, the facet joints again. Why am I talking about the facet joints? Because that's where a lot of pain comes from, and this is where I'm going to right now. You can see the, the discs, the discs are cushioned between the vertebrae, so when we jump, when we walk, when we bend, we don't allow those bones to rub on each other, so it is actually separating the space between the two bones of the joints of the vertebrae the two bones of the vertebrae. Now, this is where I'm going right here. This is a view looking down at the disc. And you can see the inside nucleus, it's labeled there. You can see the outside green called the angular fibrosis. And now if you look to the lower right, and I put it in red, okay? You can look at this other stuff, the ligaments and everything later, called the recurrent meningeal nerve. Now that recurrent meningeal nerve uh, is also called other names. Uh, it's also called the sinovertebral nerve, uh, the re recurrent nerves of Lushka. Uh, but for our sake, we just want to focus on this recurrent meningeal nerve. Why? Okay, because this is the nerve that comes out off the spinal level, and it innervates the facet joints that we just talked about. It controls the sensory portion of those facet joints. Uh, it controls and innervate the annular fibrosis of the intervertebral disc, that whole outside ring is coming from that recurrent meningeal nerve. That is the sensory portion of the nervous system that picks up the pain of those annular fiber or the annular fibrosis fibers when there's any kind of injury to the disc. It also picks up the periosteum around the, uh, of the spinal cord as well as other ligaments. But for our sensation, for our, for our knowledge, we're talking about carrying pain. That is the sensation. The sensation that you're feeling uh, coming from the disc in the neck or the back is this particular nerve, the recurrent meningeal nerve. Now, why am I explaining that? Why, why do you need to understand that? If you see that nerve, if you look all around the disc and the green, see those little, little things sticking into the green, that's all part of the recurrent meningeal nerve. And why is that important? The reason why it's important is because all your pain is coming from that nerve. It's not coming the majority of time from the spinal nerve. If you look back here, you see that big nerve coming out, the ventral ramus. Uh, 
those big nerves that are coming out, that's not where the majority of people's pain is coming from. So what I'm getting to is that when you're in pain and you see a herniated disc and you see a bulging disc or you see any kind of disc that's hurt or inflamed, you cannot go by what the MRI says. Now, the reason why I want you to understand this, there are three things you need to understand that makes you a candidate for surgery. Only three things. One is if you lose motor strength. If, for example, the nerves that come out of the neck supply the deltoids, the arm, the biceps, the triceps, and if you notice that you don't have any motor strength uh, and you're losing a lot of motor strength, then that, that can be obviously an involvement of that spinal nerve. Okay, but the majority of people who have disc herniations or bulging discs do not have loss of motor strength. Number two, if you have atrophy, atrophy means that the muscle is shrinking. So in other words, your bicep here or your tricep is shrinking and the other one's not. That's another indication of compression on the spinal nerve root. And number three, loss of reflexes. Most people who have herniated discs generally have normal reflexes because you have to have compression on the spinal nerves. And that compression is kind of like stepping on a garden hose, trying to water the garden. If the water is not getting to the garden, the garden starts to be turned brown and starts to die. Well, if the muscles are not receiving its adequate energy from the energy from the brain traveling down the spinal system, those muscles start to atrophy. Okay, they start to get smaller and obviously you're going to have more permanent problems. But I want you to understand that physicians, clinicians, diagnosticians, physical therapists don't ever talk about this recurrent uh, nerve, this meningeal nerve. And this is the reason why most people have pain uh, because of that nerve that's controlling that disc. Remember, you don't have to fall down to have disc problems because this. Uh, it can be like the outside of a donut. They can start to dry out. They can start to flake off and it can start to crack. And just by that cracking or just by the weight of being overweight or being in the wrong position or lifting incorrectly or sleeping incorrectly or having poor posture, looking down like this and irritating that disc, that disc is going to cry from that recurrent meningeal nerve. This is so important because this is the main reason why people have pain. And the reason why people get surgery is because they cannot take the pain anymore. And the reason why the majority of surgeries are not successful, and I'm not blaming the surgeons, is because what they operated on was not your primary causation. That's what's causing, that was causing your pain in the first place. So, if the herniation or whatever condition shows uh, that that's where your problem is and it's not coming from that nerve and coming from the disc, that is a high potential possibility that most people are suffering from. So I hope that you somewhat got a little better understanding uh, about this video because of the fact that uh, these nerves can play funny games. And obviously, if you're not having those three things, the atrophy, the muscle uh, weakness, or the loss of reflexes, uh, or one other thing, uh, loss of bowel movement or loss of uh, uh, urination, having a different difficulty holding in urination, uh, that's another situation itself. If you have loss of bowel movement, that's an emergency situation. But if you're not having those symptoms, I'm telling you, you're looking at someone right now uh, that has had conditions in the past that's been told by certain doctors you need to get surgery but the good neurosurgeon said no because if we did it we couldn't guarantee it's going to help you so you have to understand that your body is a self-healing organism and, it, and i want to also want you to understand that if you have symptoms or problems or you have weaknesses uh, you may not be able to do the things you used to love to do i can't but you'll find other things you don't want to be cut on and you don't want to be used as a trial guinea pig, or you don't want to be explored on if it's not 100% not necessary. I'm not knocking surgery. I'm not here to knock drugs, nor I'm not here not to knock other doctors. I'm here to give you the facts. I've been in this profession for several decades. I've seen 
thousands of patients, particularly in our office. We are one of the probably the most busiest over the years in South Florida when it comes to the amount of people. And just by experience that they don't teach you in school, um, I'm out for one thing to help save lives, to help uh, make people, make sure people have the quality and the happiness and the good health in their future. So uh, please uh, share this video. I hope that this will kind of uh, give you a, a little bit of insight uh, because of the fact that uh, this is really important. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Check my videos out on my channel, Great Self Help Videos, as well as Cutting Edge Nutrition. Check me out, Motivational Doc, on Facebook. Uh, thank you, Chatters, for being here. And uh, God bless everyone. Make it a great day or night, regardless of where you are. We'll catch up with you on our next video. Bye.